today we are and we have big goals today um huge the biggest um today we want to completely sand the uh entire oh you know the entire boat just that's all just 40 44 feet 43 the marina thinks it's 43 but 44 feet of boat we want to get that we want to get that done today um we ah, it's early i haven't had enough coffee today what we're going to be using uh is a five inch orbital sander we got two of these one of them plugs in the other one has battery um thank goodness because it took all of the batteries that we had yesterday to do the bottom uh of the dang boat which took forever here's a sample some of the pads that we went through right so we are using 60 grit hook and loop these things just sort of stick on it's like velcro but hook and loop because velcro is apparently trademarked and uh yeah this is kind of what it looks like once it starts coming off um that's really all i got i mean we're gonna we're gonna sand we're gonna sand this boat and it's gonna be done today uh hopefully early enough that we can even put on one coat of paint but I think it may be overly ambitious there but we're at least gonna get it sanded so um, yeah watch me sand so we didn't get the first coat of paint put on today but we did get the whole boat sanded um, all of the hull so we did the underside yesterday uh, but we did all the hull today um, so now we're gonna wipe down all right so now we're gonna wipe down the tow rail and we're gonna tape it off so that we don't have to scrape layers and layers and layers of paint off of the beautiful stainless steel uh, again so today we get to paint just one layer because it takes 12 hours between because it's just not warm enough but today is a very cool day we get to paint and our boat's not going to be the ugliest boat in the yard anymore today we're going to paint today we're going to paint like for real paint after all this prepping today's the day we paint oh man we're going to paint today is the day we paint <laughs> we're going to put some actual paint on this boat today's the day we paint <laughs> at least the first coat this painting thing is kind of serious business. Yeah, I think it's the difference between float and boat and not. Yeah, I think so. We have a steel boat. Steel. Heavy metal. Heavy metal sailing. And steel corrodes. It rusts. And it does, as we have, <laughs> as we have found. We found the rust. We've... From the inside out, though, that is very, very true. Yeah. From the inside out. Yep, yeah, you can have an itty bitty 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 little pinhole on the outside and then you look at it on the other side and it's like completely corroded and just just rust and then you start banging on it and then next and then thing you holes. know you've got a big hole. Big because asshole. the metal on the inside is weak. Today okay. we are going to apply the first base layer to the entire Hole. We're not doing the deck. We're mm -hmm. not going to do the pilot house. We're not doing the top side necessarily um, But from the tow rail to the bottom of the keel We are gonna paint today. Yep. What are how, we using? Uh, that's what I was about to ask you. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna do it slowly and carefully slowly, slowly. Um, um, 
Yeah. So metal takes a, a especially in marine applications, it takes a special kind of paint. It takes a really strong, durable paint. You can't use regular latex or enamel paints that you would use at your house. I don't think you would want to use a latex paint yeah, in, no, a, a in a, in a mm -hmm. submersive situation anyway. I mm -hmm. feel like that's not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we're actually going to be using is a two-part epoxy. Um, two equal parts, one-to-one -one ratio. Um, it's a fast curing paint for an epoxy anyway. Um, <laughs> well, seven days to cure, but uh, hey. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fast. That, that's fast. That seems like a, a reasonable amount of time. That gives us time to work on all the stuff inside that we need to work on too while we're waiting for paint to dry. Specifically what we're using is a Sherwin-Williams paint called Macropoxy 646. What does that mean? I don't know. It's a chemical formula for it, I suppose. Some sort like of registered trademark. Some registered. Or I don't know. So, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but um, yeah, it's a two part one to one for the base coat. And uh, in order for it to work appropriately, mm -hmm. you mix an equal part of this with an equal part of this and let it set, uh, which is called a sweat in time. Mm, explain this sweat in time. What happens? Um, from my understanding, there is some type of chemical and molecular bond thing Science. that happens. In order for part A to bond with part B, they need some alone time. Mm. Um, and that's about half an hour. Actually, we need to check the temperature for today to see where we're at. Um, because if we are above 70 degrees, then we only have about a 15 minute sweat in time. Updating 73, 73 okay. degrees at 11:32 today. We're going to be using a paint paddle paint attached paddle to, bit. A, attached a, paint, to a, drill. a paint paddle bit attached to a drill um, to get a good mixture. We are going to have full Tyvek suits again, uh, brand new ones. Uh, we don't want to get the yucky dust from all of the grinding. Yeah, see how long these last. Hopefully, long enough to paint. Okay. Because I don't want to buy any more Tyvek suits. Mm -hmm. Or get paint all over the clothes. Yeah, or get paint on the clothes. But I, I would just like to say that the material cost of things that we're just going to throw away is, is kind of outrageous. That's why shit costs so much. And that's why if we can, I'd like to only use this the, the Tyvek suits that we have for the painting. Especially I, since I had to look so long and hard to find one that actually fits me. <laughs> <laughs> Right. They're made for mi much bigger men than me. Um, um, so, <laughs> so we've got Tyvek. Tyvek. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, we have a respirator. We put new filters in the respirator mm, today. Yes, those were loaded um, up. They were so loaded from the grinding, and I've I've gone through two of the like base filters. Mm. Not to mention, I don't know how many pre filters. We will be in full protective gear with gloves and with a respirator and with Tyvek with a hood and 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 Hoodies. booties and uh, some safety glasses. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna start by mixing the pieces together, mm -hmm. part A and part B. Only a little bit at a time. Yeah, we're um, not gonna mix the full amount that we no. have. No, 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 <laughs> no. We're just gonna do a little bit at a time. Just enough to work with for about 30 minutes to an hour, and then mix up a little bit more, and then mix up a little bit more. That way your paint doesn't start to set in. Um, Tell me about your experience with painting. Um, so years ago, worked, uh, for a company that dealt in laboratories, chemical plants, pharmaceuticals, stuff like that. And one of the things that we dealt with a lot in was ventilation, especially in those chemical plants. And we had to use an epoxy based paint inside all the duct work and everything so that it was oil and acid resistant so that it wouldn't corrode the stainless steel duct work while they were ejecting all of the crap they were ejecting into the atmosphere. Yeah. So, so that we didn't destroy the duct work, we used this it's very similar, if not the same stuff, Epoxy two part A and B. I'm not sure if it's actually the same stuff. Possible. Um, well, we did get stuff that's for marine and industrial. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this is some pretty heavy duty stuff. Yeah. Um, my experience in working with it is number one, it's really thick, like molasses thick, and that's how it starts and it gets thicker. Um, you can use a reducing solvent for it, but that thins out the paint, causes it to cure longer. Um, and then come to find out, if you go to apply a second coat with that solvent over a thing, it might over a previous coat, it might not work out so well. You end up with old paint falling off with the new paint. 
it's no no reducer it's gonna thicken up over time um, the longer it sits in that bucket uh, it pretty much ruins paint brushes rollers don't plan on keeping any of that stuff that's why we got cheap ones and that's kind of goes back to that just the materials alone that we're gonna throw away and part of the purpose of the epoxy paint is to make a solid uniform bond over the entire thing helps keep leaks away and it also helps prevent rust um, I am pretty confident that paint was the only thing that was keeping well obviously because keep, as soon as we started keeping our chin together yeah, as yeah, soon as, 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 soon we, as started, we got rid of that paint there, there were holes there were holes the steps that we have are to put on protective gear yes then we mix then we're going to open up the cans and mix pour everything equally and, and we're going to set a timer we're going to set a timer so that we know about 15 minutes has passed yep. now since the temperature we only have 15 minutes so let's get down there sounds like a plan Thank you. 